Hi there. Welcome back again. This is part two. Right, I left you doing the lining. So we'll continue with that lining. Now sew a top stitch onto the top of the lining. If you notice, I'm pulling it away from the zip and sewing it along. With having the top stitch, it stops the slider catching on the lining. So once you've sewn that, as you can see here, don't sew to the end of the zip. I know the lining's a lot bigger and the pocket, that little pocket's too long. Now I could fold it over and sew it again, but no, what I'm going to do is I'm going to just sew it, seal it when I'm doing the lining. Lay it flat on the table. Get yourself a quilting ruler if you've got one. If not, just make sure you've got a straight line. Cut along. A rotary cutter is so much easier. If you haven't got a rotary cutter, use your talk chalk. Now you see that little white pocket? I've just cut straight across it. I'm just ignoring it now. So again, make sure your lining's nice and flat and it's lying all neat. Don't cut the zip. Put the front of the bag aside. We're now going to start on the back side of the bag. The piece of fabric I'm using is the bottom part of the jacket, which has got the pocket. So you've got your other side of your bag. I don't know about your jacket, but my jacket just above the pocket is shaped. So I'm unpicking it, not right to the pocket, but so that it lies flat. Because there is a bit of a shape, you know, the waist shape in it. So I need to make it flat. So unpick it, find the li straight line. So it's nice and straight. Turn it over, making sure that the straight line is. Pin it and then sew it. But before you sew it, just check that it is still lying flat. Remember, once you've sewn it, to press it. Press the seams open so it lies nice and flat. Get some iron-on vining. We just want to pad it up. If you haven't got, it's not the end of the world. Just gives it a little bit more strength on the other side. Now get your iron-on vining. Lay it down. And cut roughly where you're going to need it as you can see here where there is already padding don't need to put the iron-on vining just where it isn't you want to just give it a little bit of thickness if you can get soft iron on vining that's great now how you iron on the vining the rough side is where the glue is the smooth side is not where the glue is so the glue needs to be on the fabric you don't want to iron it onto your iron. Make sure that the coat is lying flat before ironing it on. Any bit that needs unpicking, unpick it so it is flat. When you finish that and it's ironed on, cut any excess iron-on violin that you've left behind. When you're ironing on the iron-on iron violin, make sure that you don't iron it to your board. So when it's near the edge, just make sure that you don't go over the edge of your garment. Because as soon as the iron on vining, if you go across, you will hit it on the ironing board and then it will be stuck to the ironing board. Now that side bit that was flapped over on the coat, unpick that. So what I'm doing here is unpicking the side panel that flapped over so I've unpicked that piece, as you can see, laying it just to make sure that it's all right. Now, here I'm just checking everything's right. Always check, get your ruler, level the top off. And what I'm going to see, just keep checking. I always keep checking that I've got the widths right. So I'm looking for a piece of fabric to use. So I'm using a bit of the back coat. Right, so I'm going to take that bit that I've left behind and I'm going just checking the how wide how long I need to make it so I'm cutting it about cut about three inch strip I think I've got about three and a half here because then I'm going to turn it around and then cut it down to three I want to make sure that I've got enough but I don't want to use too much that I end up not having enough for the straps I've gone a little bit longer than what I measured for the bag, so at least I've got excess to cut off. Now cut it at three inches. Get some iron-on violin again and iron it on. I've been lazy. What I've done is I've just 
grabbed a piece of vining, ironed it, made sure that I didn't hit it on the iron and now I'm just cutting the excess off. If you want you could cut it exactly to where you want it, how big the piece is but I'm just doing it just to save time and I'm a bit lazy. It's my shortcut. Get the other part of the bag. Now the piece that you leveled off at the top, put your strip on that and you're going to sew it across. Once you've sewn it, put it on an ironing board, just press it right across, then flip it over and then iron it, and then flip it over again, and that way you can get a nice sharp edge. Here I'm doing the top stitch, keeping the fold nice and neat. If I sort ahead of time, I would have put the straps in at the same time. That would have made it much easier, but I did it the hard way. So if I was you, I would do that top stitch after you put the straps in, the zip and the straps. I'm just measuring again, just to double check. As they always say, measure twice, cut once. So now what we're going to do is we're going to attach the other side of the zip on. Like I said, mine was an open-ended zip, so I'm reattaching it so that I know I can get it on right. So attach the zip if you've got an open end. If you've got a closed end, just avoid this stage. It doesn't matter what zip you use. You can have an open end or a closed end zip. But always make sure the zip is longer than the bag. Right, so what I'm doing is I'm lying it down flat. So I'm getting where I want the top to end. Finished. So I'm lining it up with a bit that I've folded over. Now what I'm doing is I'm pinning the zip. Remember to fold it so it goes downwards and I'm pinning the zip. So don't pin it flat upwards, pin it downwards towards the end of the raw edge. As you can see I'm folding it over and just pinning it, making sure that when it sits that it's sitting flat. So turn it over, pin it. Now because mine's an open end zip, that's fine because I can just slide it off. But if you haven't got an open end, just put it so that you can sew it. Now sew it on the sewing machine. Once you've sewn it, reattach. So I'm reattaching the zip so I know that it's right and hopefully I don't have to unpick it. So there. This bit I thought I had recorded, but I hadn't. So I'm going to have to talk you through it. Sew the zip exactly how you did the other side and then attach the lining. Use the lining that had the other pocket from the other side. Follow the steps that are in part one. It will be near the end of the video. Now for the straps. We're going to use the bits of fabric from the back of the jacket. Level off, as you can see what I'm doing here. I'm leveling off. Once it's level, then you're going to cut the straps. Cut the strips at two and a half inches. I cut four strips in total. I want you to make sure that I've got a long enough strap. Once all your strips are cut, we're going to be joining them all together. So it will make one long strip. I've used, this is for the inside of the strap. I've used some curtain. You can use anything a little bit thickish in fabric because you need to strengthen that strap. So cut it at three quarters of an inch and make enough so that it will be long enough to do all the strips. We're going to sew the strips together. Now we're going to do a mitre. This is how we're going to do it. Right sides together. And what you will do is put them opposite each other like I've got here in right angles. And you're going to sew from the corner. So here we go, sew it from there all the way down to there but make sure that you put the fabric all the right way cut the excess fabric when you finished and continue until you've got a long strip that way then if you need to, you can adjust it a lot easier do the same now with the strip of fabric that you use for the inside of the strap remember to cut the ends off with your fabric, fold it in half. Put a bit of string or whatever you need 
this you don't need to keep it's just to help pull it through your other piece of fabric that you're using to firm your sleeves sew it on the outside so you put all three together here's a diagram on how to do it as you can see the fold put the string inside the fold sew across remember the outside fabric must be right sides together sew down the side making sure that you don't catch the string that's inside just keep tucking it in and keep sewing straight you will find it will fray quite a bit and when you come to the mitres try and keep the seams flat when you come to the end what you do is slide it over that fabric that you put for firming the pull the string gathering it up a bit then sliding the gather up to the top and pull it just makes it easier with the string so make sure that string's sewn nice and firmly and carry on till you've got it all the way through make sure that the fabric that you cut for the inside does not twist it must stay nice and flat make sure that the seam is on the one side press it with the iron but before you do that just make sure that it is lying nice and flat go through and just check all the way through you top stitch both sides just to hold it nice and firmly all the way across once you finish the strip cut it in half and put it aside now what I'm doing is I'm measuring with the ruler getting a straight line from the bottom put a pin up the top to mark the line I then I measure from that pin two inches get the unpicker and just unpick a few stitches the top stitches that you put in that's why I said in hindsight it would have been better I hadn't done those top stitches but it doesn't matter slip your strap inside that hole as you can see I'm just unpicking just enough just to be able to slip the strap in now I've slipped the strap in and I'm going to pin it I will set the other strap on the other side to the exact same space and pin it so this is your other strap so you've got the two long pieces if you notice the other strap the one where the fold is you know where the collar is I've pinned it the other way round because what I'm going to do is sew that and then fold it back on now do exactly the same on the other side two inches go straight from the bottom as you can see I'm measuring straight to the bottom and then from there two inches double checking what I've got that side I'm measuring the other side it saves me having to pin it put a pin do exactly the same unpick the top stitch and slip the strap in and this is where you're going to do your adjusting the best is to adjust on that pocket first before you start trying to adjust the other one where the collar is because you can work out if you've got the right length or not so I turn it and make sure that the strap is lying nice and flat measuring to double check I've got it in the right place pick the bag up see if you're happy with the length if you are then do exactly the same with the other strap but if you notice I fold it over and then fold it back on once you've got your length right take it to the sewing machine to sew down I'm sewing the straps that are on the collar side first and if you notice I've opened up the collars so that when I've finished you won't see where I've sewn it on now here I broke my needle so I changed my needle changed my foot because my foot was too narrow and I've sewn it so you notice here I lie it flat sew it then fold it over again and sew it again so you don't see the raw ends gives it a more professional look now measure the other side making sure it's exactly the same length as the strap that you've just sewn on 
that's why you sew this bit at the end it's easier to adjust it because you just can slide it in or out through the that gap before finishing everything else double check those straps again now I need to pad the bag up so I'm using some five millimeter foam but you could use warmer natural or any wadding of some kind you won't really need to use the wadding in the front because there is already wadding in it as you can see so you need it at the back I'm lying it inside coming up a little bit higher but I'm putting the I'm going to be sewing just on the edge because I'm sewing with sponge I put a bit of fabric on top because I don't want the foam all gathering up if you notice I haven't folded it over and sold it sewn it edge to edge I don't want a lump in the bag so that's why it's sewn flat pull out all the pieces making sure that they are lying flat every single layer make sure it's all lying flat and the lining just give it an iron every so often so it stays smooth as you can see what I'm doing now I'm just sorting the foam to make sure that it's sitting nicely on the top put it on the table make sure it's all lying flat use your scissors and cut off all excess fabric that's peeping out I'm just using my scissors now because there's a little bit too much for the rotary cut and I'm guaranteed I'll cut something I didn't want to cut. So just go around and cut it so none of, it's all none of it is hanging out. Do not cut the zip. Unpick the zip just a little bit inwards. As you can see what I'm doing here, I'm unpicking it so it's just not level with the bag but just inside a little bit about five mil in because you need to just miss it when you're sewing fold the bag out so that you've got the straps inside the foam and the two outer bits are all together so right across the bottom remember to use your bit of fat brick on top of the foam you don't want that foam moving now definitely not my bit of fabric is a bit of bias binding I had sew down the sides I'm going to show you a diagram on how you have the collar up at the top that gets quite complicated hopefully this diagram will explain it you can see where that collar is you fold the collar down but the inside of the flap you lie flat where the zip is this is a side view not top view so from the bottom to the top where it's indicated here I'm sewing it as it would look on the top unfortunately it's so difficult to show it when you're sewing this because you've got it stuck under a sewing machine as you can see I've just made sure that the collar is folded over and then I sew do not sew the foam that you'll be attaching later a little tip here when you threading your cotton cut the cotton in an angle not dead straight across cut at an angle much easier to thread once you sewn up the side you then fold the bag with the seam of the side center and you've got the triangle at the bottom and you sew across that triangle it's about an inch and a half from the bottom of the triangle but make sure the seams at the center and underneath match if you want it wider you go higher at the bottom if you want it narrow you go lower at the bottom example if you're wanting it wider you would go two inches for example and if you want it narrow you go down to an inch or half an inch I've slowed down the speed here so that you can see just clearly if you see I put a pin across that means that I can sew over that pin if I want I'm just checking to see if the seams are matching yes they are and again I've just done this in slow motion then I turn it back and I will sew across 
just fold the foam over so it follows the triangle and is lying flat. So sew right across. Now what I'm doing here is just double checking that I've sewn it right. Check twice, cut once. Before I cut it, I just want to make sure that it's right. And you cut it. Now do the other side exactly the same. Tack down the foam in just a few spaces, places, not all the way down. Because it's foam, it can tear quite easily. So just tack it so it just holds it in place. Get the lining, pull it out, make sure that the straps and all of that are not in the way. Make sure that your lining is matching up at the top. It doesn't matter at the bottom, but it does matter up at the top. So all the way round. If you notice, I have sewn that white pocket right across. Lining does have a tendency to move and get out of shape, so don't panic if it's not matching exact. So all the way round, then unpick one of the corners, because that's where we're going to turn the bag in back to right way round. The one corner that you haven't unpicked, do exactly the same as what you did with the other bag. Pull it into a triangle and sew that triangle across. That means that you don't lose your keys in the corners and also it doesn't wear and tear. Everything always goes into the corners and that's why the thread breaks. Now pull the bag right way round with everything. It's like you roll it and just pull it through with a lot of strength. We're nearly at the end of this video. I am really sorry it is so long, but there is so many details that you do need to see. Right, now what I'm doing is, I'm going to grab the corner there. As you can see, I'm sewing it up a little bit. And then what I'm going to do is turn the corner and put that triangle on that side. Sew it across. And then to seal it, I tuck that all in and I just grab a bit of the fabric, fold it over and just sew the edge where the hole is and finish it. Now at last, your bag is finished. Push your corners out and make sure everything's lying flat. Now you can decorate it by putting a red hanky in the front do your zip up, slide it up and your bag's finished. Now if you did like this video, please don't forget to subscribe and like. I've just tucked the zip into the little bit of a gap there is so it's not in the way. You can also put a little bit of fabric on the end of the zip. So there we are. Please like and subscribe. That would be great. And if you have any comments, I'd love to hear them. So you have made this into this. And I only did it for a fiver. Promised, I will show you if the lining is slightly different. This coat, I'm making another bag. And I didn't double check. I just saw it was another fiver. So I thought I'd grab that because I like the fabric of the trousers. So I want to make some skirts. So I'm going to make a bag to match. But when I opened it, I found the lining was different. If you notice, the pocket goes into the fabric there. There's no lining to that bit. So I'm going to show you quickly how you can work around that. Here we are. Let's go. Get yourself some chalk. Draw a line roughly straight and cut away there. And up at the top here, you slightly go at a slight angle. You'll sort all of that later when you put the lining in. So unpick that bit. It is attached. Sometimes it has a chain stitch, but just use your roach cut and just unpick the excess stitches and remove your lining. And then carry on exactly the same as how you did with the other one. Well, take care. Have a great day. Stay safe. Bye.